What's good? We are back. Yours truly, the one and only Paul Pickett Podcast. I'm your host, the one and only Paul Pickett, a.k.a. Triple P, a.k.a. the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and more. This is episode um, 112, so we're going to keep it moving, try to hit that 200 mark. Once we hit that 200 mark, we're going to do another big press release. Get a write up and do a press release. Uh, don't forget my podcast is sponsored by Promo Palettes LLC at promopalettes.biz. If you need online marketing promotions for your music, your product, your brand, and your service, please check out promopalettes.biz. Also, if you're a dog lover or cat lover, you like t shirts, hoodies, or sweatshirts, please check out New Litter Apparel at newlitter.com. That's N E W L I T T E R.com. Also, for Shizzle, last but not least, I got to shout out Dizzle Brand. Dot com Just add ice, dizzle on ice, step into the future. Do you dizzle? I do. Got a bottle right over there. Um, first thing first, let me pull up NBA. Last night was the All-Star game. And, of course, um, Team LeBron won again. And it's their um, pretty much... His second, like, LeBron James, Team LeBron is pretty much undefeated. Durant didn't play this time because he was hurt. Um, pull up some of the box scores. For Team Durant, leading score was Joel Embiid, makes sense, 36. Trey Young had 13. Devin Booker had 20. Zach Levine had 13. Um, the Mellow Ball put up 18 points. In an all-star game in 17 by DeJounte Murray. And congratulations to Melo Ball being the first Charlotte Hornets to make an all-star in a long time. And, I mean, it's only the second year in the league. Some people say that he shouldn't have won rookie of the year last year. But, man, Melo Ball did more for his team than Anthony Edwards when it came to the winning category. And he put up some really good numbers. I right, team LeBron. We had 24 from LeBron, 30 from Giannis, 10 from Jokic, 10 from DeRozan, 50 from Curry. Curry basically did all he sh- – all he pretty much shot was threes. He shot 27 threes. He hit 16 of them jokers <laughs> for like – what is that, 59.3%. And I guess he had three other shots he took, you know, which is crazy. Jokic shot 80% from the field, 4 for 5. He didn't really get no scoring from nowhere else, really. Jared Allen and Darius Garland put up 10 and 13. But it was really LeBron, Giannis, and Steph Curry. I mean, that's a, that's a deadly team anyways, LeBron, Giannis, and Steph Curry. That's definitely – those three are better than any three on this other one. And what did John Moran do? John Moran only had six points in an all-star game. That is crazy. He he played what seven? He only played seventeen minutes. You know why is it some of these guys play like twenty nine minutes and thirty minutes? And like they should have really evened it out across the board. I mean, because it is just an all star game. But let's talk about the all star. They need to do something with the dunk contest. Everybody's saying it's the worst dunk contest ever. And from what I've seen, it is. Um, I'm not too savvy on the celebrity all-star game. Um, The Rising Stars Challenge, I mean, it's okay, but, you know, maybe they could do some different things. Three-point contest, Carl Anthony Towns won. What's crazy is he literally said he he thought – he literally said he was going to win, and – you know, he said he thought he was the when he gets hot that he he's the best three point shooter out of everybody out there. I mean, he's the first big man to win. I don't know how many big men competed. Um, Car Anthony Towns team should be doing a lot more if he's winning three point contests like that. They should be doing a lot more because he could. They could literally. I mean, they got him and Anthony Edwards and D'Angelo Russell. They should be doing a lot more. A lot, lot more. All right, let me get in a couple of these um, topics. First, let me talk about um, 
the Juwan Howard Michigan incident. Um, I saw some of the reactions. Um, these things do happen every now and then in sports. Um, I know Chris Broussard said that uh, Juwan Howard got mad at the coach for calling a timeout or something. And Chris Broussard said, you know, as far as uh, in defense of the coach that Juwan Howard got upset with, Juwan Howard doesn't dictate how he coaches his team. You know? And it, it really got blown out of proportion. Like, even though I know people say, well, the guy put his hands on Juwan Howard. Man, we're not in the streets, man. When you're on a basketball court, you're not in the streets. Like, people people got to understand that you got to take into account the setting that you're at, too, sometimes before you just start putting, before you start, start just swinging on people, you know, and whatnot. First of all, when you're, not only are y'all just on a basketball court, you're at work. Anytime you fight at work, that's fire. That's a firing offense. Anytime you get in a fight with anybody at work, that is a firing offense. There's nothing you could do. You, you're fired on the spot if somebody wants to fire you because of that. Fighting at work is a firing offense. Automatically, just like that. So you got to take into account that you're fighting at work. It's a basketball game. You're supposed to be the coach and the leader. So show some kind of restraint just because somebody touched your chest. You know, this kind of reminds me of like when Jeezy spazzing out on fans because somebody because t- they touch them. It could be your, the world's your world's greatest fan, and you want to spaz out on them. But like, yeah, Juwan Howard, he has a history of having a short temper. He didn't take into account the setting. You're at work. It's your basketball coach for a major university. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to say Juwan Howard was totally wrong on this. I mean, because. Somebody touching your chest, just, you know, somebody doing this to you, you know, just putting their hands on your chest. Where do you automatically get that, you know, swinging on them is is the next step, you know? I mean, that, that's not even fighting with fire with fire. That's worse. That's pouring rocket fuel on fire. You know, I just think, like, some people be looking to fight for no reason, man. I, I hate to say it. Some people be looking to fight for no reason. And Juwan Howard just, I mean, so what? The coach touched your chest, you know. And that's the thing. The guy he swung on wasn't even the coach that touched his chest. You know, I just think. I know some people, everybody said that Juwan Howard should get fired. And maybe so. Maybe so. Because it, it won't like it wasn't a full blown out fight. But just but if you were a regular employee and you swung on somebody at work, you you'd be fired instantly. You'd be fired instantly. So it could be a firing offense. And some people said it should be suspended the whole year. Um, I probably agree with that. Just because of the simple fact, I know Chris Broussard said he should be fired the whole year or suspended the whole year. Um, I think Stephen A. might have said it too. I could be wrong. But um, I could agree with that because it it is a firing offense. So anything is a firing offense. If you get suspended for the whole year, that's you pretty much got a slap on the wrist because it's a firing offense. You know, so that's really my take on Juwan Howard thing. He he's totally in the wrong because you're at work, you're supposed to be the leader of the team, show some restraint. It ain't like they swung on you. If they ain't swing on you, why you gotta swing on them? You know? Just cause somebody touched your chest or they touched your shoulder, stop it. All right, um let me get into this Enos Freedom kicked out of the NBA. 
How do I want to react to this? First of all, it's fucked up. It's fucked up that this guy is kicked, is basically kicked out of the NBA, man out of the NBA, because of his political views or world views that he pretty much, most of them were shared on social media and um, shared uh, like on news outlets. I think he was on Fox and stuff like that. Now, for y'all don't know who Enos Freedom is, he used to be Enos Canner. He changed his name from Enos Canner to Enos Freedom. He's a, um, a former Turkish citizen, uh, former Turkish basketball player that came to the NBA. He used to be a Turkish citizen. He's now an American citizen. He spoke up on what's going on in China with the, um, I think he called the Uyghurs. And um, basically that's why he's being kicked out of the NBA because NBA relies on China for a lot of money, apparently. So, you know, um, it just sets a bad precedent that because this is the thing, like there's never going to be any racial equality in the workplace if we're going to fire people over political views and world views. That's not equality. That's definitely not a quality. You know, that's that's just, a, I mean, that's that's pretty much, that's similar to just judging somebody from the skin color. You're judging them for their worldview, so let's fire them, you know. That, I mean, it doesn't bode well for racial equality in the workplace when you can get fired for a political statement or political view that you made outside of the workplace. This thing, this idea that I understand he's an NBA, but he's not in, he doesn't, it, it's not like he, he's working for some corporate America company. It, like this idea that you could have a, you could tweet outside of your job and you can get fired. You can have a political view outside of your job, and you can get fired. A worldview that that doesn't bode well for racial equality in the workplace, because that's going backwards now. That's not equality. So people only with specific views can only get jobs. That's like people saying. Only people with specific skin color could only get jobs. It's the same thing. It's discrimination. It, discrimination is discrimination. I don't. It doesn't matter what's the motive behind the discrimination or who's doing the discrimination. Discrimination is discrimination. I know. I see people who discriminate pit bulls all the time. And when I see a person who discriminates a pit bull automatically just discriminates a pit bull, I automatically have to assume they discriminate people all the time. If you just automatically assume all pit bulls are mean or dangerous, and yes, all pit bulls could be dangerous. Could they there there's potential for pit bulls to be dangerous, but like like how many deaths by pit bull in America? There's there's more deaths by knives first and foremost, car wrecks first and foremost, and then guns. There's there's more deaths by car wrecks and knives than there is guns. And I guarantee death by pit bull is not a common thing whatsoever. I mean, even if a pit bull attacks me, I mean, he'll get a he'll get some bites in his. You know, get some bites in, but I'm going to fuck his ass up. I don't care how big and bad the pit bull is. I'm going to fuck his ass up. I will choke a pit bull out with my bare hands. And if you don't know how to do it, then you're just not <laughs> you're just not man enough to beat up a pit bull. 
I mean, pit bulls, yes, they can bite you. They can latch on you. But I will fuck a pit bull up in the long run. And, and I'm not scared of dogs, period. I'm not scared of no dogs, even vicious dogs that, that think they're, you know, think they're just going to attack me and do whatever. They have weaknesses. They have a weak spot. You know what it's called? Food, treats, you know, that's the thing. You feed a dog and nine times out of 10, they're going to be loyal. You feed a person, it's a 50, 50 chance, man. It's a 50, 50 thing, but, um, yeah, it's a bad precedent, man. The Enos freedom. Is getting kicked out of the NBA because of political views and whatnot. It's really unjust. Um, it doesn't bode well for racial injustice in the workplace. Because if people can get fired for political views, then you best believe they, would, they can get fired for the skin color quick, like in a hurry. I mean, because it's discrimination across the board, any way you look at it, you know. All right, let me get into Zion. Zion Williamson. I saw a take uh, that said uh, Colin Cowher did. Uh, it was a good take or let's debate with um, Chris Broussard. His take was Zion's career. Is tough. He's a bust. He's pretty much 80% a bust. Um... If Zion is not on the floor bef- any time before the season is up, I'm going to say he's a bust. I'm going to say he's a bust. I, he just had another foot surgery. And I don't know how, how long, or he's supposed to have another foot surgery, or he did. I don't think he did. But uh, how long is going to take the heal? I mean, I had a foot surgery before. I got a screw in every foot, every toe of my foot when I got hit by a car. Now, I'm pretty sure you ain't going to have to have that. But I can tell you right now, I can't jump off my left foot whatsoever. I tried it yesterday, and I can't do it. I cannot jump off my left foot whatsoever. So foot surgery for Zion, I don't know. That doesn't sound good. It sounds like it, it – I don't really want to call him a bust because he put up – out saying he's 80% a bust, I, like that's the thing. Like I don't want to call somebody a bust when injuries prohibit them. To me, a bust is when you're the number one pick like um, Kwame Brown and you ain't really that good or um, – what was it? That one dude uh, – Anthony Bennett, you're the number one pick to to the Cavs and like Anthony Bennett and you just clearly not cut out to be in the NBA. You know, when you just clearly, when you're a high pick and you just clearly not that good, like Adam uh, Morrison, you know, when you, those are bust. But when you, when injuries prohibit you, like Grant Hill wasn't a bust to me because Grant Hill doesn't get injured. Grant Hill has a great career. Tracy McGrady doesn't get hurt. He even has an even better career, you know. So injuries, I don't want to say they're a bust. But his career could be a bust. I mean, because he did put up 20-something, 25 and 8 last year. I mean, his second year in the league, I mean, he was literally – like, had the most efficient season ever. It, it's just sad to see this, man. Zion Williamson was supposed to be one of the most exciting players coming into the league. We can't have Zion Williamson not get right. If Zion Williamson doesn't get right, it just does. it's not going to be good for the league. We need Zion going forward with the Trey Youngs, the Lucas, the Giannis's, the Devin Bookers of the world. Um, the John Morant's of the world, you know, all these new cast, the characters coming up. We need him going forward. We need him. 
All right, I'm going to get into this last topic of the day, and this is another bad precedent. We're going to switch away from sports, and we're going to go to Remington settles a lawsuit. Now, I will let you know, I don't know all the facts of this case. But this is what I do know. It sets a bad precedent. Because apparently the guns in this Remington lawsuit, um, and matter of fact, let me pull it up real quick. So I can um, just give you all a little bit. Uh, all right, this is the Sandy Hook case. So Remington um, settles. Now, from what I know, and I could be wrong, Remington didn't directly sell the guns to somebody. Like a a gun, a gun seller. Uh, so somebody bought some guns from somebody that gets guns from Remington. And somebody got killed with those guns and people sued. This is a bad precedent. Because now, like, are we going to sue car manufacturers every single time somebody gets in a car wreck? Are we, we going to always blame it on the car? Or are we going to not hold the driver accountable? Like, and not hold the shooter accountable, the person who actually did the shooting. Like, this idea, like, that I could sell something to somebody, like, say, like, I sold knives. I sell a knife to somebody, they go kill somebody, and I can get sued? That sets a bad precedent. So are we going to sue McDonald's for causing people to get a beast? Are we going to blame the people that, that um, you know, eat Big Macs all day and, and supersized fries? Who do you blame? You blame McDonald's for, for people getting fat as fuck and being a beast? Or do you blame the fat fucks that stuff their face every day with freaking double quarter pounders with cheese and supersized fries and a large diet? Who do you blame? That's the thing. That's this sets a bad precedent. It really does. And I know that people are trying to go after the Second Amendment. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. The government can take away the Second Amendment. It don't mean you're going to be able to take away people's guns. Because first of all, there's just as many legal guns in America as there is legal guns probably. I'm going to go out on a limb and say there's just as many legal guns out there as legal guns. Actually, I'm going to go out on a limb and say there's more illegal guns than legal. That's what I'm going to go out on a limb and say. There's more illegal guns out there. So, you know, if you make make it where nobody can legally get guns, then guess what? You have all the people that illegally get guns still legally get guns. And guess what? People that were legally getting them and that can't legally get them no more because you made it illegal... They'll just go buy guns from all the people that have got all the legal guns. They'll, people will still get guns. They still get illegal guns. Why are guns illegal? Why do you think they're not going to be able to get them when they're not illegal? Because you think they're just going to stop making guns altogether? Okay, but there'll still be enough guns going around for people to buy and sell. And other and just because they make them illegal in America, don't mean other countries won't have them legal and sell them to sell ship them over here. Then there'll just be uh, a market on the illegal gun trade, a super big market. It'd just be like drugs. It'd be like who knows? The cartel probably start pushing illegal guns too. Regardless, you ain't gonna be able to take away nobody's guns. Because you, you don't, who the hell are you to tell us we don't get to defend ourselves? When you're not going to defend us, you're not going to defend us. The U.S. government is not going to defend us. I can't, like, if somebody comes and tries to, you know, break in my house and shoot me, 
I don't got nobody's got time to wait for the cops to get here to do something about it. When your life is on the line, you got to either defend your life or you die like a coward. And I'm not about to die like a coward when my life, if my life is ever in jeopardy, ever on the line. If somebody pulls a gun on me and I got a gun, I'm going to pull my gun out and shoot before they shoot me. Now, if, I, if, they, if they pull a gun on me and I ain't got no gun, I mean, unless I really know that they're going to, unless I really, really know, man, I got seven five. Unless I really, really know that they're going to, um, eh, really, really know that they're going to, um, shoot me. I'm not going to do nothing about it, but, um, yeah, I'm sucking my eye. So, yep, yeah, it sets a bad precedent. It really does. Um, uh, we can't have people like suing the seller just because the buyer does something they shouldn't do with it, you know. But um all right, we're gonna have to end this podcast. Got something in my eye. I gotta go splash water in my eye, apparently. Once again, I want to thank y'all for tuning in. This is episode 112. Don't forget video version goes to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Rumble, and we stream live on TikTok. And then um the audio version goes to Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, TuneIn, Slack, or Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Player FM, and much more. I want to thank y'all for tuning in. And I'm going to try to keep these other an hour long because I had it an hour and 50 yesterday and I couldn't uh, stream it on Twitter because StreamYard wouldn't let me. But uh, peace and I'm out.